<clears throat> what is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Squawk with Swoop. And I have got the biggest guest today. I've got the <laughs> man himself, Eddie Maguire. How are you going, mate? Swoop, great to be with you, pal. I love uh, watching what you're doing and uh, seeing you on the Twitter and all the rest of it. And <laughs> it's great to have somebody who's as mad a Collingwood supporter as me uh, getting no. around this, mate. But you're doing a great right, service and we're loving it, mate. Good, good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. And, and actually, talking about being a Matt Collins supporter like you, I actually grew up in Brody um, <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. I uh, grew up in Brody, went to St. Dominic's. Um, I was Did actually, uh, yeah, I was altar boy there for about two or three years as well. So well, that was I. I was all that. <laughs> no uh, way. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I went to, you know, I went to St. Dominic's. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't yeah, know you were so altar boy. I was an altar boy, yeah. <laughs> survived all of that. Uh, we, used to, well, we had a good footy team back in those days. And, St. Dominic's Junior Football Club. Oh, a few wow. players came from there. Uh, Curly Austin from Carlton and Mark Dawson from North Melbourne because they were the oh, wow. two stones in those days. Yeah, so uh, where about some Brody where from? Um, probably right next to Olsen Place, right next to um, Panola. So I went to Panola for, uh, in high yeah. school, for high school. Yeah, yeah so like... Where, yeah, where about next to Olsen Place? So did I. I was one block from Olsen Place. Oh, I was... Um, Lahin Street is where I grew oh, up. Lahin Street. Now, back yeah. in the day, mate, the Lahin Street Sharps... <laughs> you, have you ever heard of the La Hinch Street Sharps? No. Mate, La Hinch Street Sharps were the toughest blacks. Uh, outside <laughs> of Brody, they were known as the Brody Boys, but there was La Hinch Street wow. Sharps. They were the boys used to hang out and they used to sit down there at Olsen Place. Oh, and, uh, so I was one block the other way up at uh, Gerbert Street near Camp yes. Road there on Woodford yep. Street. So there we go. Now we've got ourselves sorted out, mate. You live probably three blocks from where I grew up. Bloody hell. What a, what a, what a, small, what a small, small world, mate. It is indeed. <laughs> and how'd you enjoy Penal? It used to be Ferry College when I was a young bloke at Gagan. It yeah. was. Yeah, no, I um I really enjoyed it. So yeah, graduated, graduated there. Um yeah, it was it was pretty good. Obviously they had the Glenroy campus and the Brody campus. Yeah. Um yeah, it was a little bit of fun and did did what I had to do and I'm um, here now, so <laughs> good on you, mate. Well that's what my youngest sister went to Sanctus to Sophia, which is now the Glenroy campus, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah, like, there you go. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Look, I wanted to sort of get you on, talk about you know, obviously, talk about the pies and and what it sort of means to you now that you're, um, you know, you're uh, not that you weren't a fan before, but you're kind of out, out of the club now, and and now you're just just a nuffy like uh, like one of us, that's, mate. That's it, exactly. Well, um, what's it like? Um, it's it's just really exciting. Uh, you know, I obviously was at the club as president for nearly twenty three years, so it takes a fair bit out of you, <coughs> excuse me, and you put a lot in. And you get a lot out. So just to be a servant of the club was uh, a magnificent honour because, it, as you know, uh, living at Broadmeadows, it was uh, it gave me a sense of identity being a Collingwood supporter. Um, you wouldn't have gone to Victoria Park, but when I first went there as a five or six, seven-year-old uh, with my dad walking, it was the first time I actually felt part of a, a community was when uh, I was inspired by the Collingwood crowd. I remember getting off the train at uh, Victoria Park Station couldn't believe that there was a station named after our <laughs> magnificent uh, home ground. And then walking in and then when the crowd went up at Victoria Park and in my case, Peter McKenna walked up to full forward at the, the railway end. We were in the forward pocket standing there and it was just sensational. I just couldn't believe it. And then later on going to see the pies at the MCG and Peter McKenna kicked nine against Richmond this particular day. And it was just, uh, you know, it was just so fantastic. So now I go uh, a bit different. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on the other side of the ground these days <laughs> in, in a box. And uh, But, no, for me, it's like the, 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 this week everyone's coming up to me. Um, you know, it's, it's always gratifying that Collingwood people um, understand how much I love the club and, yeah. and therefore have the same feelings as everybody else. So, uh, uh, you know, I often say uh, I, I might love Collingwood as much as a lot of people, but no one loves them more than me. Um, so <laughs> we, and, it, and it means there's a lot of us who love the pies exactly the same amount. And... And that was always what was always in my mind was that I just wanted to make our club as good as it possibly could be. So when Victoria Park was falling apart, now I believe that Collingwood supporters deserve to have the best setup as of anybody. So we did the best deal ever at the MCG. Um, you know, as I said, Victoria Park was falling apart. So we, we deserve to have the best setup for any athlete in Australia. So we went to what was then the Lexa Centre, now the AIA Centre. And then we were able to double back around and we've been able to build our spiritual home, Victoria Park, into the women's uh, league and to, you know, we want to go on to get under 18s in there, et cetera. Yep. And, uh, you know, I've been talking to the current board about a few different things and they've got great plans. 
So, you know, for me, it, it was everything. We're able to get the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the end. We've got <laughs> the MCG, the uh, AIA Centre, and Mighty Victoria Park. So, and all within, you know, kicking distance of each other in the inner city. It's the best property play of all time. And uh, it, it just gives our club a, a wonderful future. It does. And, and look, you mentioned, you know, Victoria Park, and, and you're right, I was too young to sort of go there and watch the Pies play. Uh, so I, I probably went there for my first time a, a few years ago to watch an AFLW game there. And, yeah. you know, it was it was pretty surreal. I filmed a couple of videos there in the lead up to finals as well, in the stands and stuff like that. And it's such a surreal experience with all the memories that are sort of etched into to all of those seats. And now we're sort of making our own memories yeah. at, at the MCG and the AIA Centre and stuff like that. It's... um. It's it's a really good time to be a Collingwood supporter with everything that's going on. It is, and it, look, uh, in my mind, I've always believed Collingwood to have the capacity to be one of the biggest clubs in the world. And uh, you know, in 2010, 2011, in that period, and now again in 2023, you know, our average crowds are as big as anything going around. And uh, you know, this in a city that's got ten other well, ten clubs, you know, it's quite amazing. But the Pies, you know, everyone's getting excited about Carlton getting a crowd for that. <laughs> Best time in two weeks. That's because they haven't been to the footy for 20 years, most of them. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, for us, we just roll in, roll out, fill the place and uh, and just keep going. So it, it's, it, it is a phenomena, but it always has been, you know, and that's why for me to have just had the baton for a while and for the board around me and the, all the administrators who worked with us and the players and the coaches to be able to just add another few bricks in the, the Collingwood wall, if you like, and then hand it on in good order to uh, the to the, the board that's there now under Jeff Brown. Um, it, it is, it's great. And here we are, you know, we 2018, a grand final, preliminary final 2019, win a final in Perth in the in the first of the, yep. the plague years, you know, rebuild the club in that next year and then bang into it last year again and uh, now into a preliminary final. You know, we've gone pretty well. In fact, you know, in the time basically from the 2002 grand final where we'd been able to get the club from from last into the finals. You know, I think we're in a, you know, we play in a, 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 I think it's, we've played a grand final on an average every four years. And a yeah. preliminary final, you know, I think we've played 10 or 11 preliminary finals. Yeah. So, yeah, you get value for money for a Collingwood supporter. We don't, don't always win the flag, but, you know, no one does. But, yeah, we're in there and we're playing in big games and you get value for money. I mean, for, for most clubs, I, I used to say, uh, you know, clubs, call matches blockbusters. We call them home and away games. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, it's, it's true. absolutely true. Absolutely. I mean, everyone's going out about, you know, the, the crowd, uh, you know, for, for Friday for the preliminary final. Now, I don't know how many this year we've played in front of about four or five, 90,000, I think. Yep. So yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is, but it just, but it says everything about calling supporters, you know, when all the other clubs left the MCG for dead, it was the Pies who went there and sat in a building site and, and you know, helped bring it back and pay for it. Don't worry about that. Uh, the money's yeah. come through Collingwood over the years. So, you know, Collingwood's uh, more than paid for its place in this city. No, I, and and I can I can only attest to that, seeing seeing what I've seen with, with what I sort of do uh, and stuff like that. And, yeah, we were playing to 95,000, 96. At the Anzac Day, I think there was 90, over 95,000. We've played to a million supporters this yeah. season. Preliminary finals, just another... TV rights. TV rights. Yeah. Channel 7 would be gone without us and Fox Woody <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and all the radio. And, you, know, they, they, it, you know, it's great that Carlton's up there again because, yep. to be honest, I used to always, uh, you know, not or well, half-jokingly say to the, my colleagues at Carlton, you're costing us a million bucks a year. What's wrong with you guys? Come good, for goodness sake, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's great because the Collingwood box office is where it's at and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start be able to make some good money and, you uh, you know, and that'll all go back into the infrastructure for the supporters and the players. So, yeah, you know, the great thing about our club is it's not privately owned. It's actually, you know, and they're, they're, you know, the board do it for, for nothing. In fact, usually, at, you know, reasonably to, to big expense, not only yeah. time, but also finances. But that's that that was the job. So, yeah, you know, no one should ever complain about that. It's a, It was an honour. And for me to, to have been, you know, even thought of as being involved yeah. at Collingwood 20-odd years ago and then to become the president, you know, it was just it was just wonderful for me. And and with that sort of presidency, so you, you sort of took over at, at the end of ninety eight from um, Kevin Rose and, and ninety nine yeah. we obviously, you know, finished last, got that um got that number one pick, brought Josh Fraser into the club. A couple of years later, we're playing in the O two, O three grand final. So you've seen Collingwood, you know, in your presidency at the lowest of sort of lows. Yeah. Um, and 
to the highest of highs, you know, that 2010 grand final, unfortunately 2011, well, uh, and, you know, and 2018 and, and, and seeing, and seeing them and sitting back and seeing them, it, it's, it's like a roller coaster supporting the pie sometimes, but yeah, seeing them back up now at the know, apex. And don't forget, we don't, you know, we don't shoot the salary cap and we don't get, uh, 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 academies and all that sort of stuff. We, we had a bit of success, obviously, with Father Son, but everyone gets that. Yeah. Um, and a little bit with the uh, the zone players, but everyone gets that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think uh, the, one of the proudest things for me is that in the 23 years that I was president, our club did not cause any trouble for the AFL and only brought money, riches and and glory for the AFL. There were no drugs, there was no... Uh, no uh, uh, salary cap breaches, nothing. In fact, we led yeah. the way, and yeah. uh, and that was great. And you know, and the, and the AFL have acknowledged that, so it's not just me trumpeting it. But uh, you know, and we had, and, and that's not just me. That's the whole club. That was, you know, the, the boards that I was lucky enough to be involved in. Some ripping people. And you mentioned Kevin Rose, you know, like the immediate past president. Kevin was just great. He still you know, was right till the very end of my time at the club, and, and even now socially. Was a great sounding board. He loves the club. I mean, the Rose yeah. family, for God's sake, you of know. Course. And Nuno De Quino. People probably don't even know who Nuno was. He was vice president when uh, when I, I went and got him as the head of CUB. And when we were completely broke, I went into his office one day, and I said, uh, "We've got no money, and in fact, the money for the next three years of sponsorships has already been spent. Um, wow. We need your help, okay? Because there was nothing. We had I couldn't figure it. I was trying to figure out how to even turn a dollar." Wow. And our club was on the bottom of the ladder, you know, shocking for facilities, no leverage anywhere. AFL came to said, you have to sell games into state, that sort of thing. They, they were trying to knuckle wow. us at the time. And uh, I went into Nuno's office and he sat there. I don't know if I've ever told this story publicly. And Nuno handed me over a contract and said, fill it in. What do you need from CUB? Wow. And I filled out a number and I pushed it back. He said, you know, you can get a lot more than that. I said, if I need it, I'll, I'll come back. I said, no, no. So we're going to rebuild this club. We're not looking for handouts. And then Nuno went, right, okay. And then he came on the board. And wow. It was just fantastic uh, because he, he realised that we weren't just, you know, we were serious. So, I mean, for me, it was about rebuilding Collingwood. I had a real mad stare in those days, especially when the AFL came to our boardroom at Collingwood and said, oh, you have to you know, play games interstate. And I thought, we've carried you for over 100 years, you bastards. As, uh, and uh, at that stage, Craig Swan and I escorted uh, Wayne Jackson from the premises. Um, <laughs> said, Thanks. And that was the end of it. Now we, we declared war. That was it. There was we, we knew on a war footing from that moment on. And, uh, you know, it wasn't great always. Uh, I didn't want to be in fights with the AFL all the time, but it was hand-to-hand -hand combat for us to survive and then to thrive. And, you know, you look what they were trying to do. They, they deliberately, and they say it, so it's no, I'm not telling tales. They wanted Brisbane to do well. They wanted Sydney to do well. Yeah. That was their whole modus operandi was to get this going. But I used to say to them, you know, you can get as much value as you get Colin with Cartland S and a Richmond and Cal, right? Remembering that Richmond and Cartland were useless coming through those periods through the uh, through the 2000s. And, uh, you know, but as it turned out, uh, we've got a great competition now. You know, the fact that Gold Coast, uh, sorry, not Gold Coast, GWS and uh, and Brisbane are in it. You know, the AFL, yeah. like they're, they're doing cartwheels. The fact that Collingwood and Cartland are in it, it makes it even better. I mean, if and I know in their heart of hearts, the AFL, as much as Collingwood Carlton would turn Melbourne upside down, they, they've already got the money. They sold out all the finals, and yep. so, so if it became if it became uh, uh, GWS versus Brisbane, they'd be pretty happy. The AFL, of course, it's it's one one yeah, baby well, and their other baby. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but we got to support the party. That's it. Yeah, yeah exa exactly right. And look, I guess we can sort of transition into that. This this game on Friday, um, it's. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a crazy one, you know. We saw what happened um, last year with the prelim. Obviously, Sydney absolutely heartbreaking, and, and we go into this year with uh, a better list. Uh, I feel, and you know, sort of everyone's sort of feeling uh, a new sort of um, a bit of steam coming out of us as well. Craig McRae is just getting better uh, at coaching. How do you sort of see Friday night playing out? Well, I think um, you know, I think we've got twenty one of our best twenty two. Uh, ready to go. So Tay Adams obviously uh, got yeah. a bit of a finish during the week and fingers crossed he's right because he is the heart and soul of our, of our yeah. club. Absolute ripper. Um, I think uh, Maury uh, will be far better for the run. Just looking from a from a old reporter's point of view, I reckon Josh Dacos was injured in the last game. I think mm. he, I watched him on 
all the TVs, uh, uh, all the vision I saw of him over the weekend at training the week before he kicked with his left foot every time. And I uh, didn't think he had the penetration in his kicks. I reckon he might have had an ankle okay. uh, two weeks ago, but looks to be going beautifully now. Um, obviously, Nick will come in. Um, be interesting to see where we play him, whether he goes into the centre straight away, where he comes off a halfback flank, or even starts on the bench, then comes on as an impact player. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Sorry. So all that sort of stuff uh, is fascinating. But look, I, I love. I you know I think Murphy having a run as well, being back. Um, <coughs> I really feel for Johnny Noble. Yeah. Um, but who knows? He might get selected yet. Um, on the matchups, you know, they've got Zorka and a few of these blokes who, you know, nip around like to go forward. So we'll see where that goes. But, you know, I just think we've got a, a really good setup now. I, I, I love it. Uh, I think that uh, this is a big opportunity for, for Coxie to roll back the clock to 2017 and uh, and do it again. I think I like Coxie being first ruck. Certainly yeah, at the too. bounces. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we get straight into, you know, he's got to run in, stick his knees straight up and, and get into their, their guys. You know, obviously got the sore shoulder. But if we um, if we can do that, and and you know get the ball rolling forward our way, you know we're going to be good. Obviously, you know they've got a great uh, midfield, mm -hmm. but uh, I like the way. Uh, look, they've had St Kilda was an easy kill for them. You know, yep. There were times in the game St Kilda came back. Port was shot last week, and yep. uh, you know, they they got on and fixed them up. I mean that's all they can do. But yep. uh, if our guys come out and hit them with the Collingwood pressure. Like we have done in uh, you know, Melbourne, particularly early in the game, and you know, we we ran and terrorised Essendon in the last match. If the yeah. boys are on, then you know, I like us a lot. And and look, we talk about you know we talk about the Collingwood pressure and, and how good we are, and, and Craig McRae and all the sort of players say it that the fans are the nineteenth the nineteenth yeah. man on the field, and and you've experienced it like no other in prelims in grand finals. Yeah. How how is that when you're sort of you're sort of standing there and and hearing that roar? Um, mm. How does that? How does that make you feel? Oh, it's, it, it makes me feel so good. I mean, it was as I said, the the first real emotion of Collingwood was when the crowd roared when I was at Victoria Park, and yeah. it was on. That was that was a noise. Wow, you know. And then the big games, and and so that was always in my mind what Collingwood was all about. You know, I used to have the slogan "Welcome to the big time," and all you had to do was turn up with a with your scarf on that you've got now, say "Go <laughs> Pies," and you were part of the biggest game in town. So it didn't matter whether you're know, rich, poor, you know, anything. You just turn up, be a Collingwood supporter. Um, one of the one of the most special moments for me was in the preliminary final of uh, of 2010, when the Collingwood chant went up against Geelong, and it just rattled the MCG. And I remember sitting there with my two boys and my wife, and they sort of looked up at me, and because I was always don't go the early crow on this, and they were when it was, it was in the third quarter, and we were killing it, and. Uh, the crowd just went berserk and you could feel the whole place lift. And where I was sitting was in the VFL enclosure, AFL, sorry, yeah. AFL enclosure. And I could see people turning around to see, you know, what I was looking like, you know, I was probably sitting there looking like Caesar. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but at the same time, I could feel the hatred coming as well. Oh, where yeah. People just really thought, no, nah, they're getting too big. They're getting too big. You know, and it's no surprise they changed the interchange rule that, over that summer. But, um, there was, there was a real, it was a catch-22. We, It was just the biggest moment in our club, I reckon, at that stage. And then, of course, we came out and had the draw and then we flogged them in the in the replay. But at that moment in time, I think Collingwood was the biggest club that's ever been in the AFL by that far. It wasn't funny. And uh, that Collingwood champ, when it went up, my God, it lifted, nearly lifted me out of, a, out of my chair. It was fantastic. And and, and it still, I, I it just, still I, feels like... I, I just sit there, you know, sort of looking like I was being serious. Seriously, I was jumping up and down inside. I <laughs> wanted to get up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, you got to, you got to, you got to. Sometimes you got to. Sometimes the, oh, that, yeah. that twenty, that twenty ten grand final. It look, uh, it's pretty stupid if I say, you know, how did that make you feel? Because obviously, oh, it's yeah. amazing, right? Re it, it's a drought breaking grand final. As the president of the club, from what you saw, the club. In yeah. rabbles when you came in to that 2010 and being in you know so many losing grand finals and prelims, how was that? Well, I think we we actually deserved it by that stage. You know, yeah. I think we were a bit stiff the two years before, to be perfectly honest. But uh, um, you know, when when Goddard kicked that goal in the in the the first grand final, I, I just uh, I've never felt despair like it in my life. Yeah, uh, you know, and you know, I was there in '77 and. 
uh, in the last race was uh, just utter despair that we could get knocked off after everything we'd done that year and everything that happened. And, you know, Clanky missed a couple of goals in the late in the second quarter and uh, just left the door open for we got those and we would have been about 15 goals, I reckon, anyway. And then when it was all happening around us, um, you know, I could see, uh, you know, the coach's box that there was 12 seconds left. You know that there's two seconds on the throw in, so that's yeah. 10 seconds, which means unless somebody does something stupid and gives away 50, it's a draw. So I probably had 30 seconds up my sleeve to get composed as to what we were going to do for the rest of the week and uh, went out onto the ground. And uh, the uh, what happened at that stage is the, the toilets had banked up and the rooms had flooded. So everyone had to stay out on the ground and Maxie had sort of blown his full for valve at that stage about not wanting to come back next week until I grabbed yeah. and said, what, do you want to be a losing grand final captain for the rest of your life? I said, mate, this is half time. And Mick Malthouse that night gave a great speech about it, half time. And, and, but when we when we're out there, we we're able to work it out. And I'd read Ron Brassi's book, The Coach, our in 1977 North Melbourne brought everyone together. And Brass got up at that, uh, that night at, the, at their banquet and said to all the women, give me a husband for one more week. It'll be worth it. I know you want to go on holidays. I know you've had enough of it. Give me your husband for, and boyfriend for one more week. So when we went down, the first thoughts were to just go home. I said, no, no, no. We're, we're paid for Crown anyway. We're going there. Right? Let's get everybody in. And what we were able to do as a club, and this is why I always felt it was a great club win. So the supporters had done their bit. We got there. And then the administrators had to go to work. And there's shots of me in the in the rooms talking. I'm talking to Andrew Dimitri, trying to get the deal, what's going to happen. We arranged we'd have a 7 o'clock uh, breakfast meeting the next morning to go through everything we're on the phone all night, working it all through. So I wanted to know that I could go to the players and say, you're going to get paid, you're going to get paid well. Uh, we'll fix up your holidays, we'll do this, we'll do that. So anyway, by the time we got everybody in to, to Crown for the dinner, um, we had Pie in the Sky Travel in those days who had got everyone's holidays and said, mate, we're right. We got all the parents who were there because what happens in Grand Final Week? The, the players get terrorised by their nearest and dearest. Everyone wants a ticket. Can you yeah. get me a ticket? Can you do that? I sat next to you at school, etc. Mum and dad fly in from Perth or South Australia or wherever, and they're there. So what do they? They want to be, you know, come, let's have dinner. Of course. Or, or, and you're going, oh, I just want to, you know, give me some give me some time. You go, you go to training, everything's hyper. You know, uh, you've got to do 10,000 autographs. You've got all these things, and, and it wears you down. It becomes really wearing if you're not prepared properly for it. So anyway, we got there in the night, and we had all well, old-timers. Um, I remember going in at uh, halfway through the last quarter. I went inside the room just to get away from everyone for a second, and I, I went to the bathroom, came out, and and Bob Rose's uh, wife, Elsie, was there, and she was head in her hands. She said, oh, no, we're, we're cursed and all this. Was, and she yeah. went out, and all this stuff was going on. And uh, so we knew that we had a job to do. So when we went on the ground, uh, you know, I, I said to Mick Moldhouse, this is what happened in 77. And, he, and Mick said to me, he said, tell me exactly what happened. I said, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. And, you know, they went there, they consolidated, they got it right. We were flipping and flopping all over the joint. Everyone's you know, ringing up, oh, we should have won and all oh, this. And yeah. Phil Carmen and I, he's out for a second week, all that routine. And, uh, and they knew they blew it. So North sort of came out of that grand final thinking they'd saved their grand final as opposed to Collingwood who thought they'd blown another grand final, that this said right. another one, right? Whereas on this occasion, our guys had won, had got there, but St Kilda got in front and we got back. Yep. So so from that moment on, it was it's half time, And, you know, we, we might have told a few fibs uh, along the way to the players as well. Um, you know, we're saying that uh, uh, St Kilda had, you know, I went around and told everybody the story about what we're doing. St Kilda are out there all over the place and, their president said that they should play the game on a Sunday to, to give them an extra day. I said, why don't we play Friday night? We're ready to go. <laughs> We're making it up. <laughs> and the players went in the next day. But the main thing was that night we got everyone settled and the next morning they came in and uh, Gary Pert, myself, um, had that under control That had and David Emerson at the club had all that stuff under control. And then you know, Mick, you don't have to worry about Mick, he had everything under control from a yep. football point of view. And Jeff Walsh, just fantastic. So we all come in the morning, everything's set. You know, could go around a swanny, yeah, mate, they're going to pay you this and that. Oh, beauty, he says, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go to Bali, right, okay. Um, <laughs> so everyone was right and we got ourselves. So 
they, we, the next day they did all the testing. They took uh, urine samples and spit testing and all this. And uh, I think Mick might have fibbed to the players. He, he, he actually said to them, oh, your, your results have come back. They're unbelievable. Because we were saying, you know, that they're down at Moorabbin. You know, the place is falling uh, apart. We're in the, we've got the altitude room. We've got the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Lexus Centre. You know, yeah. we, this, is, this is why we do all this. This is why we went to Arizona. This is where it pays up. So, so they, everyone was up on their toes. Come on, beauty. And you know what? The next day, because it had been a hot grand final that day as far as hot as a game, but hot yeah. uh, climactically. By Tuesday, all their levels were back up. Everyone was brand new. And whether it was uh, physical or psychosomatic or a combination of the lot, by Tuesday, our guys were running on top of the ground and, and ready to go. So yeah. then Mick had to actually hold them back rather than trying to get them up. So by the time we got to the Saturday, when we got to the game, you know, I, I, I was that confident we were going to win, and uh, and then we came out and flogged them and got the got the early goals, and and we sat back and uh, smoked the cigar as they <laughs> And uh, for me, it was so to get the original question. Um, it was everything for me. It was a dream come true. One to see a Collingwood Premiership, two to see it in such dramatic circumstances, having been at the seventy-seven to to have it under control. Um, three because I thought uh, you know. Mick had just been so deserving of a premiership at Collingwood yeah. um, and and, the, and all the boys and everybody was there and all the, the old supporters. You know, a lot of them are dead now. That was the last one they saw. Yeah, Elsie yeah. Rose was there. You know, I was able to ring up Peter McKenna on the Sunday morning and say, uh, Peter, if you – if uh, I said to him, what are you doing for the grand final? Oh, I'm thinking of going. And I said, no, I said, uh, can you do me a favour, Pete? Remembering this is the guy – who I've become Collins Water because I'll, I'll watch Peter McKenna. Yeah. Right? But his number on the back, so on by my mum. <laughs> and uh, I said to Peter on the Sunday morning, well, I've got a job for you. Oh, what can I do, said Peter. You know, do anything for us. He said, I think we can win it. And I said, yeah. I said, well, if we do, I want you to present the Premiership Cup. Wow. And uh, I, I must admit, I still get teary thinking about it, and so did Peter. And there was just this silence. And, oh, you know, and I said to him, I said, have you got, a, you got a new suit? He said, oh, yeah, I bought this. So the, he said, I bought this yeah, beautiful suit. He said, yeah, it's navy blue. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Get in on Monday. <laughs> we did, yeah, so, so that was it. So he was standing in the race with the great Cowboy Neil, who died this week of St. Kilda, yeah, unfortunately. both with one hand on the cup, you know, to present it. And they had the draw. And then the next week, it was Peter who was able to do it. And he said it had a profound in, impact on his life. It, uh, made him feel part of the club again and it sort of, of course. got rid of the sins of all those uh, missed opportunities, um, which he, he was really hard on himself, shouldn't have been. And uh, so it was a it was a healing experience for so many of, of everyone around the place. And you know, people said to me, was it, you know, was, was it the best moment of your life? You know, they expect you to say, oh, I don't know, the day you, know, you got married and your kids are born. I'm like, of course, they're different situations. But for me, yeah. it was because my two boys were with me yeah. and, and Carla was there who, you know, when she got engaged to me, none of this was in the brochure. Yeah, you know, this yep. Collingwood stuff, you know. And yeah, you know, my boys didn't know anything. I was present before they were born. You know, yeah. people don't realise Carla was twenty eight when I became president. You know, I was thirty three. Yeah, um, we were young. We had players older than the president, and uh, wow. so and and the pressure was on. And you know, because I was a public figure, they were into me. You wouldn't even remember the footy show. They taking the, the mick out of me all the time, and and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So. It was constant, but, you know, you're in it and there's nothing better than being the man in the arena. There's no doubt about it. So so when we won the flag, yeah, it was everything. It was yeah. everything. I loved it. Like, like Caesar, like Caesar, right? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, though, it, this sounds almost a bit uh, obsequious, but uh, the great thing about it is actually seeing everybody else enjoying it. Yeah. The supporters, yeah, people going up and rubbing Bobby Rose for luck beforehand and, you know, I still love reading the uh, the supporter sites. You know, um, you know what people were writing, just how much joy it gave them. And then when we went back uh, to uh, Amy Park after the after the win, and uh, you know, Lionel Richie had played, so we've got yeah. Lionel Richie you know, <laughs> warming up the crowd for us to walk on the stage. <laughs> yeah, it was out of control. It was just unbelievable that uh, we had. It was just such a great day. And then the next day, obviously down at. Uh, that at uh, Gosh's Paddock was just sensational. Uh, it, yeah, well, so it was everything. And and you, you talked about 2010 sort of being deserved after everything that we sort of went through. 
now sort of sitting back, do you see, you know, obviously we, I, I like to, you know, not think too far ahead, but if we do yeah. beat the Giants, go into, go into the premiership, you know, against, you know, Brisbane Lions, 20 years on since 2003, yeah. uh, so yeah. many storylines and Carlton as well. Would this one, if we, if we win it, be more earned than deserved? Oh, we've earned it, no doubt. We finished on top of the ladder in yeah. the longest season ever. Yeah. yeah. The longest season ever. Um, no, I mean, you know, the and the style of play, you know, we, we've brought the game back to its best again. You know, yeah. When I say we, you know, Craig McRae has been phenomenal in his coaching team, you know. I never thought Justin Leppard should be trying to get Collingwood over the line. <laughs> <laughs> and... Brendan Bolton, the last time I saw those two, they both wanted to fight me because I was giving it to them. <laughs> oh, <geez>. um, <laughs> at various stages. Um, but, um, no, it, it's been wonderful. And, uh, yeah, Craig is such a – just such a coach for the moment. You know, the, his energy and the way he, he, he actually gets Collingwood and, yeah. and the supporters. And, and yeah, there's a, there's a great feeling of lightness around the club. So I, I think that uh, – I think that that's one of the things that's going to be great for us is that there's a there's a feeling of lightness, not the the pressure that's always on Collingwood. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you know, no one owes you anything, but uh, yeah, both Collingwood and Brisbane were clearly the best two teams in the home away season, and uh, yeah, Brisbane undefeated at home is an amazing record, and I think. Uh, you know, what the coach has gone through up in Brisbane with all the stuff that happened, you know, the, the pressure on Chris Fagan, who is one of the best people we ever meet in footy, Chris Fagan. He's just a wonderful yeah. person. And what he and his family have had to go through this year to be able to keep it all together is is phenomenal. So, you know, if it was playing anyone other than us, you'd be saying, yeah, you deserve actually yeah. this, but they can maybe have it down the track. He's not getting it this year. We deserve it. <laughs> we deserve We deserve but, it this year. We deserve but, it. I mean, I, I mean, I just want to say, to be honest, you know, I'd, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have tears in my eyes when they say number 10, Scott Pendleton, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, he's just been so enormous for our club and, and what a what a, what a a superstar. And, you know, Maury, who... You know, it'll be amazing if, if this all happens, you know, if things go well for us. You know, uh, I had him in the rooms as a 10-year-old, giving him, you know, added ass packs to keep him so he wanted to bury for Collingwood, not Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Peter and uh, and all that. Sort of and the Dacos boys, you know, Peter, Peter Dacos, my God, you know, does does he deserve every, everything that Dakes gave to our club as a, yeah. as a player? Uh, and just been, and Colleen, who's just such a wonderful mother and husband, and you know, for them, for the day costs to have that moment, you know, just would be. I mean, there's so many parts of it, you know, and, and I, yeah, I just love it all. And big, big, big Meso, big yeah. Coco. Imagine, you know, he imagine. Can bring a cup, he can bring me a cup round to my place for Christmas lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we have Christmas lunch together every oh, year. He comes that. up. He dressed up last year as a giant elf. Turned up. <laughs> <laughs> not like a giant elf, seven foot elf. <laughs> no, and, that's, uh, that's goosebumps. That's that's absolute just goosebumps. Uh, there's, so, there's so many stories. I mean, you name a player. I mean, look at Jeremy Howe. I mean, what he went through to get back, uh, uh, you know, when he broke his arm, I didn't think he'd get back. You know, uh, Isaac Quain has been fantastic. You know, to hear the stories of how hard he worked with the Dacos boys over the summer. They said, you know, Johnny Noble's a great story. Uh, you know, Bruz, you know, after everything he got through, after yeah. Melbourne tried to sabotage his yes. chance playing the grand final, you know. That's why I was, you know, nice and, you know, I just thought of that the code was just broken. Just, what are you doing? Okay, we get it. It was an incident and, you know, nothing against the brace was there. They're wonderful people. I spoke to his, you know, dad at uh, Danny Ladley's uh, launch the other day. You know, we'd been texting. But, you know, it just had, had nothing to do with what happened to, to poor old uh, Angus Brayshaw. But, you know, I just thought, gee, no one's thinking about brother's life here. 100%. You know, I agree. You know, to get rubbed out for a grand final. Anyway, we've got to get there yet, but we're, let's, we're all in, set and ready to go for the preliminary final, and that's the main thing. But, yeah, there's, there's you know, people say, oh, you know, don't think to, don't get ahead of yourself. But, you know, the great thing about being a supporter is you can. The yeah. great thing about life is actually sometimes it's, it's, it's waiting to go on holiday is better than a holiday sometimes. The journey yeah. sometimes be better than the destination. So let's enjoy the next, uh, what are we, week and a half to go. Let's get to this week and yep. then let's see where it all falls next week. If we're there, by golly, they'll know we're around. 
And if I don't know, I'll look at Williams and go again next year. And go again, 100%. Look, before I do let you go, I did want to make mention of one thing that probably not a lot of people um, uh, realize, and one thing that I'm really you know, thankful for. I watched the Four Corners program uh, a couple of weeks ago about um, the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and you know what you've done with the pink magpies um, to start them out and myself and a couple of other um, supporters we've actually started we, we Collingwood were the last they didn't have any the pink magpies disbanded and we yeah. didn't have a, a pride supporter group so we've actually started a Collingwood pride mm-hmm. and I just wanted to sort of thank you for you know yeah. for for helping you know at the at the start with the, with the pink magpies and, and well now, there was no I could tell you it wasn't popular at the start there was no yeah oh yeah there was no, of no course. rush from headquarters or anywhere yeah. else get on board so but for me Collingwood has always been the place for disassociated to come together as one and that was always my illness because that was my experience as I said I, I didn't know where I belonged as a kid my parents were from overseas and, you know uh you know you know Brody I lived in this yeah you ever through where Brody East primary school was and yep. you know I went to St Dominic's in the school uniform and you had a fight on the way to school and Fight yeah. coming back at lunchtime, and a fight going away. <laughs> fight after school, then you can't play footy together. Um, you know, so that's that's that was primary school, and uh, and then I went to school on the other side of town. So there was always this, but the thing that gave me my sense of purpose was the Collingwood Footy Club, and uh, you know, so for me, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Collingwood, are oh, you a debt? No, 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 I could never repay the debt that the Collingwood Football Club gave to me as a as a person, as a young man the joy that, that my boys and my family gets from being part of the army. And uh, it, it's, you know, it is, it's just, it's just been a, a wonderful journey. And, you know, as I always say, I'll be a pie till I die. And uh, I just love, love when that, uh, that famous song comes on and the boys run out the MCG and, you know, just be something else. And, uh, you know, I was asked the other day by the AFL, what happens if Collingwood plays Carlton? You know, they just wanted to sort of test the, <laughs> yeah, the jumpers, you know, and all that sort of stuff. I said, now we want them in their navy blue. Yeah, we yeah. want to beat, we want to beat them in their full kit, you know. And, uh, and I said, if that means we have to wear the white jumper, well, that's so be it, you know, the old one. But uh, we'll see what happens with all that. But you know, we don't want the two teams with the black backs. No, said, no, no. I mean, I, no. I, I don't know what happened. I designed a third jumper for playing against Carlton yeah. and Port Adelaide, which was the sort of the black, fr- the, the you know, the front, the, the jumper we wear. With a white stripe down the yep. middle, which was the 1917 version that sort of we brought in when I became president. But we changed the back because you don't have Carlton with navy blue and us with navy uh, with black and white and Crazy. the white and the white numbers. So if we have it, and I think it's going to happen, where we'll have our the, the the white back, if you like, with the black numbers, yep. it looks sensational. And I mean, I don't know about you, Swoop, but you you're young, you, you probably don't understand how much we hate Carlton, but. Uh, Give me, a, oh. give me, you've got two hours for me to explain. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I'm starting to. I'm, I'm, especially, oh, I think yeah. it's a sort of new era with social media. It's just, yeah. you know, not. it's not as, um, no one's bashing each other in the in the streets, but they're bashing yeah. each other online and uh, I'm oh, in the yeah, thick of it, probably, so I get it. I saw some big blues in the old days, my God. Uh, but uh, <laughs> got that on the train, wow. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, um, but yeah, you know what the indicator, I, I warned Luke Darcy yeah. on the hot breakfast when he was getting, yeah, you know, oh, this is good about Richmond coming. Said, don't, don't, don't wish this on anybody. You know, and then a year later, he said, "Oh, you're right." I said, well, <laughs> "Wait till this one get cracking." Um, no, but uh, if, if we get if we get a Collingwood Grand Final and against Carlton, and just that moment when we run onto the ground and you see both teams line up for that first bounce, and you see the famous black and white stripes of Collingwood and their navy blue, and it right. goes, and we're into each other. We've played each other more times than any other clubs in the history of the game. We've played more grand finals against each other. You know, the Pies have, uh, uh, Pies have played on an average of three and a half, every three and a half years in the entirety of the history of the game. We're in a grand final, you know, Love and you. we're in there and we're there, you know, we're thereabouts again if we can get up over this weekend. So we're in the preliminary final. But, you know, that that's the sort of thing. So this week, we you know, we go up against the newest team in the competition. Yep. You know, there we were in there, Orange, good on them. But uh, you know, you'll know that it, when you turn the TV on and you see those black and white stripes, you know you're watching serious AFL. You're not confusing it with anything else. You know, All right, there they are, and uh, that's what they say. And we go, here we are, and that's what's going to make it so good. So yeah, I haven't, any, I haven't lost any. 
passionate about it. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. I, I just love it, mate. It's great. And, uh, you know, as I said, those mighty magpies, when we get stuck in them, it'll be just fantastic. I can't wait. Eddie, thank you so much for coming on, mate. I really do appreciate everything, uh, you know, that you that you have done uh, for the club and, and thank you for, for coming on and chatting to pleasure. fans and stuff like that. Now, what I want this week, this week is, right, this is the, this is the challenge I'm going to put out to all Collingwood supporters, right? Tell us. If they, get a, if they get away to a start of the opposition or they get a little bit in front, I don't want anyone sitting there looking glum, right? We're going to have 90,000 of the 96,000 will be there or 85,000. We've got to be into them from start to finish. We've got to support the boys. It doesn't matter what yeah. happens. When the ball's going back to the centre, I don't want people sitting there, you know, looking at each other. I know the, it's all changed, but back in the old days, because they used to get the ball straight back and, and get in and not wait for 45 seconds, the 15 seconds before the bounce, when they go again, got to get the raw going. Right? Yeah. We've got to get everybody up and going. Give that, give Coxie that impetus in the 15 seconds beforehand. Get it going. Because this will scare the shit out of them. They're, not, they're used to play in front, in front of friends and family, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we've got to be there, right, and just give it the Collingwood. So I want us to be not the 19th. I want us to be the 19th, the 20th, the 21st, 22nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th. Right? <laughs> they absolutely just assault them up. I'll, I'll never forget when the only time I ever went to a game, I thought, geez, I wonder how this the crowd's going to go here, was the preliminary final against Richmond in 2017. They were all up and going and all the rest of it. And they got the drums going beforehand. I thought, mm -hmm. they, they might have us here for the, for the crowd. And the Collingwood crowd roared and and it it drowned out the drums. It drowned out the drums. Richmond ran out. They couldn't hear anything. All they could hear was Collingwood people screaming and going berserk. And then our boys ran out. And I know, because I asked the boys after, they said they couldn't believe it. They could yeah. hear it all happening in the room. So they couldn't hear the drums. And all they heard was this roar. They wondered what was going on. And then when they came out, it just went again. And that was it, set the tone. Everyone was on. And uh, you now Richmond got sat back on their heels a bit. Yep. And away we went and we got it, gave it to them. So, but we've got to make we'll sure. It's, so it's one thing, you know, carrying on when we kick a goal. We've got to get it right when they kick one. 100%. Eddie, I agree. Thank you so much, mate. I appreciate <laughs> Jones, it. Sweet. I'll be leading the charge. Don't worry. I'll be there, mate. I'll see you there. Thanks, buddy. And Thanks, Eddie. congratulations for you and everything you do for the club as well. Thank you so thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, mate.